If you are a photographer, I know this has happened to you. You travel to a faraway place that you'll likely never return to and get totally skunked on the weather. I'm talking blue skies every single day. Don't worry, it happens to all of us. It's part of nature photography. But in today's video, I'm going to show you in Lightroom how to make the best of those blue sky photos. Let's not waste any more time and get right into this. Here's a photograph taken on one of those beautiful blue sky days that I was talking about that everyone else loves but photographers hate. And this photograph from this beach was taken in Sapat Beach in southern Pakistan, which I would say classifies as far away and exotic and a place that I cannot easily return to for better conditions. So in this case, let's go ahead and press D on our keyboard to get right into our develop module in Lightroom. And the first thing we're going to do is a few basic adjustments just to bring back some of our dynamic range. The first thing I'm going to do is click on these four boxes here to open up our different picture profiles. And in this case, I'm going to choose Adobe Neutral. You can see as I click this, our histogram actually changes up here and it gives us more dynamic range because in this case, I'm shooting directly into the sun. I have some very, very dark, dark shadows and some really bright, bright, brights. And I want to mitigate as much of that as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Let's bring up the exposure a little bit. We can bring up the shadows and up the blacks a little bit as well. And we can take down those highlights like so. I can also maybe increase the vibrance of this photo to bring back some of that saturation we lost when we changed the picture profile to Adobe Neutral. I'm also going to add a little bit of contrast on the upper end with our tone curves. Let's go ahead and bring up the histogram like so, and then kind of suppress down the midtones like that. So we can have a little bit more contrast back into the image, but it's more controlled where we're adding it so we can easily see before and after. At this point, I can easily see that I have a bunch of ugly sensor spots in the image. Let's go ahead and get rid of those with our little remove tool right here. I'm going to have our mode on this far left remove, and I'm not going to use generative AI or detect objects or anything like that. And I'm just gonna go through and click on any little spot that I see. I have a bunch of sensor spots. It's just part of shooting in the desert have this one next to the sun. I'm gonna click on that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I can say, hey, did a pretty good job. So far, this has all been pretty basic stuff, but now we're gonna go ahead and get into the problem of fixing this blue, blue sky. Now, even though I really like this photo and the composition, I cannot stand how blue and empty the sky is. There is a ton of what I would call dead space going up in the top and you have this somewhat harsh transition from a little bit of color down here on the horizon, and we have this nice sun star, and then just completely blue, just nothing going on. But thankfully, it is very easy to fix this and tone down the overwhelming harshness of this blue sky by introducing a color cast to the sky, or a color gradient. Our next step is to go down to color grading, and we can go over here to highlights in this little bar right here. And we can actually select a nice and warm color to add to the highlights. In this case, we want to add some nice warm colors to the highlights. So let's just click and drag on this color wheel over here and add some saturation like so. We don't wanna to go too far. That's gonna make it look unnatural but maybe something like so. So we're adding a little bit of color back in there into the sky. And we can already see before and after. That looks a lot better, but we're not done yet. To really make the most of this blue sky day, we are next going to go over to our masking panel up in the top right here. Going to click on that. And from here, we're going to go down and create a big radial gradient. Gonna click and drag right over the sky, just like so. I'm gonna have it big, covering the entire sky like this, and I'm gonna shrink the feathering so it is 100% feathered, and then covering the entire sky. The problem though, is I want this adjustment to only affect the sky. I don't want it to be affecting the beach and all these nice bubbles we have down here. So at this point, 
I'm going to click on these three dots and I'm going to intersect the mask with the sky. And you can see at this point, I can take this radial gradient and anywhere I move it will only affect where it intersects with the sky. Let's move it back to where we had it originally. And at this point, I'm going to give it another color cast. Lightroom calls this a color effect. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to add in more color over to the sky, just like so. Let's choose something like that. I'm going to exit this out and let's turn this off and on before and after. This is a dead simple trick, but it fixes so many of my blue sky photos by taking away that harsh, harsh, overwhelmingly blue sky that is dominating the landscape and creating a lot of dead space and transforming it into a nice color gradient. Your eye likes things that have gradations in color, so we have a nice warm transitioning to that blue rather than just totally solid blue. We're doing pretty good at this point, but let's go ahead and add a few more masks and finishing touches to bring the most out of this photo. In this case, I really love all of these bubbles in here in the sea foam that leads up as a leading line over to our focal point of this big spire or sea stack. And I think we can use a little bit of masking and a little bit of dodging to make this even more apparent and make these bubbles stand out even more. So let's create a new mask. We're gonna do a brush. We can leave the feathering and the flow and density all at 100. And I'm just going to brush in just like so in all of these areas that I want to do a little bit of dodging in. Of course, if I increase the exposure, it might not look good because I also have some of the shadows selected. So at this point, I can easily subtract a luminance range and just click where these shadows are and just like that, it will subtract away the shadows to where I have just the midtones and the highlights of this section of sea foam selected. And I can go ahead and increase the exposure, maybe increase the whites a little bit. And I can go down and maybe even increase the texture and the clarity to really see this nice sea foam that leads your eye right up to the focal point in the image. If I zoom in here to the sunburst, we can see that this section right here is definitely a little bit blown out and we can soften this by creating a new mask. We're going to go down to radial gradient. I'm going to make a big radial gradient just like so. Maybe turn it a little bit. And at this point we can tone down that really blown out section just by adding a little bit of negative dehaze to this. Maybe even a little bit of negative clarity. We can also add a little bit of warmth or increase the color temperature right where that is. We can see before and after, before and after to try and hide or minimize the amount of blowout that we have in this section. To finish this photo off, we're going to add just a couple of more radial gradients in our masking panel to emphasize the visual flow of this photo. Let's go back to our masking panel going to create a new mask with a big radial gradient. And this time I'm going to go make a big one right here, right in the center, right where the focal point of the image is. And let's increase our shadows a little bit, maybe increase the blacks and just barely increase the exposure, just slightly brightening everything right here in the center. I'm going to click on these three dots, say duplicate and invert the mask and then just take down the exposure just a little bit like so, just to make sure that this is our focal point in the image. Let's see what the photograph looks like though without any of this masking applied by going over to our masking panel and clicking on this little eye here to see before and after, before and after. If you like this style and you wanna see more of me, go ahead and check out my website, warnerwildernessphotography.com. From there, you can sign up to join a photography adventure or go on a tour with me, or just check out some of my other photography. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. I'll see you next time.